31, we're back and starting this problem again on my computer. So in example two, we're still going to multiply numbers into our function, and we're going to graph these. But I want you to take note that the multiplication is inside the grouping symbols for example two. And I want to contrast that. Let me scroll up for just a moment. The multiplication was outside the grouping symbols in example one. So depending on whether that multiplication is inside or outside, it changes how it stretches your function. So let's go over and graph these. I'm going to hit y equals. Now I have all of my functions in here from example one, so let me go clear these out. Okay, and then let's enter in. I'll do all of my functions. Oops, excuse me. Let's clear that out. So we had x squared. Actually, let me do two of these at a time. And let's do in parentheses 2x quantity squared. All right, now I can hit zoom 6 if I want um, just to make sure my window is that negative 10 to 10 on the x, negative 10 to 10 on the y. Um, I didn't adjust my window at all since we just did example 1, so I could opt to hit graph, but I'll just hit zoom 6 to be safe. Here comes your basic x squared function, and there's your 2x squared function. I want you to take note that you had this 2 in here, and this really shrunk down horizontally what was happening. Or you could say it stretched it vertically. That's valid too. But I want you to see that horizontally, I just didn't need as much space to cover the same kind of height, right? Because you see that my height cuts off at 10 either way, but I only needed a little bit of the x-axis to do it with 2x quantity squared, and I needed more to do it with x squared. So let's head over here and type in 0.5x squared. And again, try and get ahead of me in terms of what do you think is about to happen when I hit graph. And just to show you an option, if you ever want, and this is one of the most exciting things you can do on your calculator, so I want you to brace yourself because it's about to get real. Um, if you scroll all the way to the left and you see that that little line is kind of blinking now, if you hit enter, all right, just watch, Okay, see how it's a little thicker, okay? Okay, it's pretty exciting. Now I'm gonna hit graph, and do you see how my 0.5 quantity, x, or 0.5x quantity squared was a little bit thicker? And I also want you to see that when this multiplication, this, this um, excuse me, this coefficient was a fraction, because that's basically one half, it actually stretched this thing out horizontally, right? Because again, if you look at y equals x squared, which is this one in the middle here, I needed about this much of the x-axis to get to my, my screen fill, and then with that thick one, I needed a lot more of the x-axis. All right, so it, it stretched it out horizontally. Now, just while we're on here, I mean, like I said, this is gonna be fun, gang. So if I scroll all the way to the left where that thing is blinking, if you hit enter once, you get the thick line. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> I don't know if you are. Let's hit graph. Right, so it can actually shade things for you. Isn't that kind of creepy? I guess not creepy, it's cool. Um, I don't really like that one, especially because it blocks my other parabola. You can shade below your line. Now this one's fun, all right? Again, brace yourself, <laughs> it's about to get crazy. All right, so then it has a circle and it will draw it out for you. Oh my God. <laughs> and then the other two are gonna come in um, when you do that circle option, it really messes with the, the speed of your calculator. You can see that that continuing um, dot up there in the corner, or that, that line that's dotted, it just it means your calculator's thinking. Um, the ghost one looks like this. So if you see right now, there's a dash with a zero. If I hit enter one more time, do you see how it's just the zero? All right, this is the ghosting, right? It'll just trace it for you, and it doesn't leave a mark. Oh my god, oh my god. And like I said, this is about the the most fun you can have with your calculator. It's not too much fun after this. Um, and so we've got that. And then the last option for you, if you don't want to ghost, is you can dot it, all right? And that one kind of looks cool, okay? All right, now I don't want us to forget that whenever you're graphing, if you wanted to get a table of values, you can hit second and graph, and you can see those table of values and you can scroll up and down to get to different table values if you want, but it can really assist you when you're trying to get your graph onto your paper and turn it in on your midterm. All right, so with that, I'm gonna flip back to my paper lecture and we're gonna pick up right, right after this, we're gonna start graphing by hand. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.
Hey Math 31, let's take a look at these parabolas and compare and contrast them and take note that this time the coefficient is getting multiplied inside the grouping symbols. All right, previously it was outside those grouping symbols, the grouping symbols in example one being the absolute value function. This time we're multiplying inside. And it's not completely unrelated to what we did in example one, but we want to have a chat about how do graphs get affected when we multiply by a constant inside the grouping symbols. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now I put all three of these graphs into my y equals. I'm going to hit zoom six and I see my toolkit parabola, here comes the skinnier parabola, and here comes the compressed parabola. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna use my table function and graph a bunch of these. So my initial parabola, all right, give me a moment to graph these, zero, zero, one, 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 negative one, we got two, four, and then negative two, four, and then you would have three, nine, and negative three, nine, that would be your basic parabola, your toolkit parabola. And you see I kind of missed right there. Just make the dot bigger, nobody will know. All right, this is f of x. All right, so now if I want to plot g of x, it's 2x quantity squared. So if I'm looking at this, it looks like I have 0, 0, and then I'm going to have 1, 4. All right, and then it's 216. I can't even get that on my graph. So 216 would be about this 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6. I don't know, it'd be pretty skinny. All right, and then I'm going to have negative 1, 4 because of symmetry. All right, so if I try and graph that, it is really, really skinny. Really, really tight here. Okay, let me make the tops all around the same height. This one would be g of x. Let me go over to y3. It looks like we have 0, 0, and then I'm going to look for the nice ordered pair. So 2, 1, 2, 1, and then I can see 4, 4, and 6, 9. So 3, 6, and then 3, six, nine. All right, and then let me go ahead and mirror that on the other side. So I would also have negative two, one, negative four, four, and then negative six, and then we were at four, so I'll go five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's graph that function in. Okay, and that one is h of x. So what I want us to consider here is take a look when there was a two, right? When there was a number larger than one, this, this isn't the fraction, this is the fraction, this is not the fraction. When we have the two in there, I want you to just take notice at how skinny this became. Yes, it was a vertical stretch, I'm not denying that. That's the same thing that we saw in example one, but I also want you to take note of how skinny this was horizontally. All right, it was very, very skinny. Like to get to this y value of 10, or actually technically 11 at the top of this graph, I only needed a small part of the x-axis. To get to the y values of 11 on f of x, I needed much more along the x-axis. And a y value of 11 on h of x, I needed a lot, much larger portion on the x-axis. So you can see that horizontally we got compressed when our number was greater than one, and we got stretched when it was a fraction. So for these particular problems, the way the parabolas work, not only do they stretch and shrink you vertically, they're compressing you horizontally, okay? Or I shouldn't say it's one or the other, it's just the way that you interpret it. When you see the two here, you know that you're gonna get squeezed, you're gonna get compressed horizontally, but because you can foil this out and write this as 4x squared, you could also go back to the techniques we used in example one and say, well, I'm gonna be stretched vertically. Those are both correct statements in this particular type of function. All right, so with that, let's take a look at example three and see if we can come up with an equation that relates function g to function f. All right, I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.